Good afternoon, or should I say evening, uh, morning, morning? At any rate, I am the Game Master, pleased to make your acquaintance. Before we begin, there is something I must tell you. You see, my job is to draw you into this world with my voice and cards, which is why I believe it best for you to play with the sound on. In fact, I insist on it. However, as you can see, my voice is subtitled, so you can always read along as well. Now then, are you ready? Let's begin. <clears throat> Welcome to Voice of Cards. You are about to take the first steps of your adventure. Through a realm of sword and sorcery you will travel. Battling bloodthirsty monsters as you strive, I have every faith you will accomplish great things here. I? I am merely a witness to your exploits. Now then, your departure draws nigh. May your journey be a safe one. This is Castle Advent. Queen Nilla reigns over the kingdom from within its wall. Three white-clad adventurers have gathered here at the Queen's summons. Present yourselves, O oh faithful of the Ivory Order. From upon her throne, the queen regards the adventurers. So you are disciples of the Order. The youngest of the three steps forward. She holds herself with well-born grace. I am Winifred of the Ivory Order, your majesty, she says. I lead this fellowship. She bows, glancing to her two companions. In response, the stern-looking one inclines his head and brusquely names himself Berwin. The older man is the picture of courtesy as he genuflects and introduces himself as Hedwin. It is these three our story follows today. In other words, your party. The queen acknowledges the fellowship with a nod. In a soft voice, she explains her errand. Someone has stolen the royal treasure. I bid you reclaim it. Under normal circumstances, I would entrust this to my soldiers, but I do not wish to... It seems the troubled queen is judged she can entrust this matter to none but the Ivory Order, beloved of the people. It is our honor to serve you, your majesty. And thus, the quest falls to the Fellowship. Short of any clues that could lead them to the culprit, however, they press the Queen for further information. The Fellowship asks the Queen what the royal treasure is. The Queen describes a bottle containing a certain liquid. Without it, she trails off, 
but the desperation in her voice suggests its loss could spell disaster for the kingdom. The Fellowship asks the Queen if she knows anything about the thief. The Queen says witnesses might be found at Nexton. Usually, one would expect recompense for this sort of undertaking. As demanding a reward would go against the tenants of the Ivory Order, you hold your... The Queen, however, has already said she will reward the Fellowship with whatever they desire. It seems the royal treasure is just that important. Pray Terry no longer here. I await news of your success. The Fellowship bows and takes their leave. We can waste no time finding the treasure, Winifred strides toward town. Wait, cries Berwin, blocking Winifred's path. A monster. You dare stand in our way? Edwin scowls and lunges at the fellowship. And fight.
Winifred heaves a disgruntled sigh as she smooths her rumpled garb. Showing no signs of weariness from battle, Berwin silently wipes the monster's eye. Edwin inspects the remains of their foe. The queen spoke true. Winifred gives a grim nod at his words. Mayhap the treasure's theft and the monster's behavior are connected. Some first things first. The Fellowship needs to gather more information. To Nexton, they set their sights. How may I help you? The proprietor inquires. Will that be all? The proprietor asks. I'm too scared to leave town with all those monsters out there. The woman sighs. Welcome to Nexton, hails a man. The man doesn't respond to any question except to parrot back his original greeting. The man helpfully advises you take the opportunity to purchase equipment and curatives while you are in town. A woman sits hunched over by the side of the road. Upon catching sight of the fellowship, she calls out she's sprained her ankle and needs you to take her to the nearby apothecary. Winifred rushes to her and helps her up. Berwin lifts the woman onto his back and the fellowship sets out in search of an apothecary. You arrive at the apothecary. After taking a curative, the woman begins hopping up and down. Nothing holds a candle to ivory order medicine, she beams. 
She turns to the fellowship, her eyes widening in surprise. You three. It seems she's only now realized the fellowship are disciples of the Ivory Order. The woman takes each of their hands in turn, thanking them for their service. The Ivory Order is famous for providing medical supplies throughout the realm. Every smile the Order brings to someone's face makes Winifred proud to be a disciple. How may I help you? The proprietress inquires. Will that be all? The proprietress asks. The man claims he saw a suspicious someone leaving the castle grounds, carrying what- He didn't get a good look at their face, but says they were nothing but skin and bone. The fellowship thanks the man for the useful information. The woman begs the fellowship for their autographs. She seems to greatly admire. I know there's nothing to worry about with disciples of the order. He Upon asking, the woman says she was attacked by a, a strange creature, she says. Nothing but bones. And it clutched a bottle of medicine as if its life depended on it. Nothing holds a candle to ivory order medicine proclaims the woman, swigging this curative and that. An innocent-looking young boy accosts the fellowship. In this parlor, you can play cards. The child rambles on, wheedling you. I'll give you this if you play with me.
You make your way to the inn, where you're greeted with a hearty hello by the owner. Thanks to a royal decree, you're allowed to stay the night for free. And you're not about to refuse such hospitality. The party leaves the inn feeling rested. Apparently, there's a monster lurking around the outskirts of town stealing medicine. Rumors claim the monster fled to the west. Thanks to the information gleaned from the townsfolk, the first clue was the queen's description of the treasure. Then there's the bony figure seen fleeing town. The skeletal monster. From all that information, the Fellowship distills the thief's true identity. Realization strikes Winifred. I know who our thief is. The monster made of bones, Hedwin interjects. Erwin nods in agreement, as if to say, another sage pronouncement from the great and wise Hedwin. Winifred clears her throat, 
proclaims that the Fellowship shall head west out of town and walks off. Let's do this. Fellowship moves westward, only to be 
unnerved by the sight of a human figure moving through the trees. The presence of large packs suggests the sun bears down hard upon us this day, Winifred says, approaching him. The traveler lets out a chuckle. Indeed, I've just been swimming in the sea to the west. I beg your pardon, but did you catch sight of a monster fleeing? He gives her a puzzled look. There's nothing out there but the sea. I suspect you might find your quarry there. The fellowship exchange glances and nod as if to say, then that is where we shall go. A traveler hoists his packs, suggests the fellowship speak to the fisherman on the western shore, and takes his leave. Let's do this. The fellowship comes upon an anchored ship. Close by, a fisherman of exquisite physique hauls a net out of the water, his muscles rippling. This is no time for lustful reverie. Winifred races to his... That vessel is cursed, the fisherman mutters, trembling. Night after night, it leaves port without a soul aboard, headed this to the fisherman's mind is the result of a curse. His head drops into his hands. With but a single dispeller, I am certain I could lift it and sail away. Alas, the Fellowship find themselves when they resolve to return to Nexton and find some. The Fellowship hears a young man arguing with the apothecary. As the Fellowship approaches the door to intervene, the young man bursts out of the sh- He storms past Winifred, nearly crashing it, but he makes no move to apologize. Instead, what a hateful little man, grumbles the apothecary. Winifred vows to teach him proper manners, should they ever meet again. How may I help you? The apothecary catches sight of the Fellowship. She gestures to the drawers filled with her wares. The fellowship insists they will pay as any other customer would, and sets about browsing her wares. Will that be all? The proprietress asks. Thank you. 
Thanks for playing, the boy squeals. He hands over the medicine bottle as promised. Winifred hands the despairing fisherman a dis- The fisherman snatches up the concoction. So delighted that his pictorial muscles begin to twi- He opens the bottle and proceeds to douse the ship. Set sail for the cave? The fisherman asks. Let's shove off then. He beckons you aboard 